Romilly, I yield. And I do want, want, want to make a comment, because I actually watched the George Stephanopoulos interview um, before this hearing with Joe. Joe Biden did not say that no one suggested that we should keep 2,500 troops there. I read the quote. I, I have the time. It was my quote. Moment. I have the time. Well, it's, it's, and what he said was, you cannot have 2,500 troops stay there in a stable situation. So we should at least be accurate about what information was provided. I would urge everyone to go back and actually look at the words and not take what is being said here as accurate. Chairman, I read it the is, quote. I read it too, and I read it with a clear, open vision of what he was saying, not with the bent to try and make sure that we could successfully have a partisan attack on him. He was asked, could they stay there in a stable environment? That is the option, he said, wasn't on the table, not because it wasn't offered, but because it didn't exist. And while we're ripping apart these three gentlemen here, I want to remind everybody that the decision the president made was to stop fighting a war that after 20 years it was proven we could not win. There was no easy way to do that. If he Mr. Chairman, kept, I believe that General Bacon was clear if he had and just he should be kept, defended. I Thank will you. be happy to yield Mr. Rogers' time when I am done. What he made clear was we needed to stop fighting a war that for 20 years we've had these conversations over and over again. Democrats bash on the Republican president more than they bash on the Democratic presidents. Republicans bash on the Democratic presidents more than they bash on the Republican presidents. But the end result was the same. 20 years of an endless series of decisions by very intelligent, very capable, very committed people. Any implication that the three gentlemen in front of us are not very capable, very intelligent, and very committed to this country is simply partisan political opportunism. We can look at 20 years. Pick your favorite general. Pick your favorite president. Pick your favorite leader. Okay? None of them could successfully do what so many members of this committee are sitting here telling these gentlemen that they're basically idiots for not being able to do. We should pause for just a moment and think about the fact that maybe that's the wrong argument. Maybe the mission itself was really hard to achieve. And what President Biden said is we're done. We're not going to have these hearings anymore. We're not going to have the funerals anymore. We're not going to lose the service members fighting a war that it is clear we cannot be successful. And we all pick nits on this decision or that decision. Why didn't you say this? Why didn't you do that? 20 years of a whole lot of different people leading has led us to this point. And we said we're going to stop. Mr. Once Chairman, this, said this that, is inconceivable. They're bringing the war here. The war is not over. It's coming to America. You know, the funerals are here, I, Mr. Chairman. And yeah. we count on you and it your leadership and these generals to know the war is not over. Argument. It is Mr. clear Chairman, that point you have to interrupt. Mr. Chairman, we're not done with this war. The point is, yes, we are going to have to continue to contain this threat. And 20 years no of mistakes is an excuse Having for the US failure of the withdrawal. Afghanistan was not succeeding. Mr. Chairman, point of order. I have to make that point. Mr. Rogers is the ranking member on the committee, and I will give him the time to respond. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I did note the Stephanopoulos interview, and, and I disagree with your interpretation. <clears throat> Mr. Stephanopoulos came back and asked him again. So you're saying that nobody uh, advised you to leave the troops, and that was his response. But I think the general officers here and the secretary have made it very clear that they gave the president advice that he wouldn't listen to. Uh, the last president, they gave him advice, and he did listen to it. So, I mean, I, I'm not challenging, and I have not in any way disparaged these great gentlemen. In fact, in my opening remarks, I made it abundantly clear I don't want them shouldering blame for what happened in this withdrawal when it was the administration and the State Department and National Security Advisor. And with that, I'll yield uh, a Mr. minute Rogers to uh, Mr. Bacon.